Welcome back to the workshop. It's great to have you here. This is part three of the Shamshir Scimitar. We want this thing to be a beautiful, hopefully, work of art. We've got a Damascus blade forged out. We've been working on the guard. Now, we're taking a lot of inspiration for this build from a Shamshir in the Royal Armory in Stockholm. And it's got some beautiful embellishment and adornment on it, and we want to do a little bit of that. So I've been thinking about design. And you remember in the first episode, I took to the iPad to start making some sketches about what I could do for the embellishment. But I then thought to myself, what if I hired a professional artist who spent specializes in engraving designs to whip me up something fabulous to put onto the sides of this guard. So I sent him this photo of obviously what I came up with on the iPad and he came back with his version. I'm going to want your feedback, Jamie, on what you think and how feasible this is. What do you think of that? I think it's awesome. I also think it might take about seven months. <laughs> <laughs> it does look really good. This, I love the scroll work, but yeah, you've really got a lot of, that's a big challenge. <laughs> you know, I really appreciate that actually, Jamie, because I was expecting you'd turn around and say, Alec, there's no chance you can do that. Anyway, I asked him for a simplified design. Right, okay. This looks like it's more your speed, to be honest. It looks well, thank like, you. It might take about three and a half, not seven months. So that looks pretty cool too. It's um, a lot more simplified. It doesn't have like the intricate scroll work stuff. That's the whole point. The intricate scroll work is uh, kind of master engraver type stuff. And uh, I am not anywhere, nowhere close to being able to do it. That's going to be so difficult. Enough talk about design work for now, because we need to actually make the guard worthy of any. We need to cut out a hole into which the handle will fit in the underside of the guard, so it's back to the mill. Right, we've got the beginning of our handle hole cut in, and as you can see, we've poked through to the other side. So that's as deep as we need to go. So now I'm gonna start cutting in in this direction. Right, so now, Due to the metal removing capabilities of the milling machine, I'm making myself a little bit of a rough template. I'm just gonna use a big old carbide end mill to rough out everything that roughly, roughly, roughly doesn't need to be there. That is significantly lighter. It's also hot, very, very hot. So I'm now trying to work out what's next, and I'm really hoping that what's next doesn't involve going into the grinding room. Unfortunately, that's exactly what it involves. God damn it! <laughs> it's actually all right for me now. I've got a VersaFlow. Sorry, Jamie. Decided I wanted to remove the paper that I had on it the first time around so that we could put a second one on, a fresh one. It's just now taking a very long time. It took a long time to scale it to print right on the computer. Now it's taking a long time to actually get it stuck on accurately. To the grinding room! It's pretty slow going right now because I don't want the paper to come unstuck from the workpiece, nor do I want to burn the paper. So I've got to kind of stop and wait for it to cool down very, very frequently. But uh, it did give us the opportunity to do that. Holy moly. That's the first time that's been on the blade and by goodness, did it just slip right on like it was made for it. Now, is this sword not gonna be just one menacing, awesome piece? Golly, 
Look at that curve on that bad mama jamma. I've got some news about something really fun that we're going to be doing on the 15th of July. This episode is sponsored by Discord, and they've come out with the brand new stages feature, and I'm going to be hosting a stage on Discord on the 15th of July. So I really hope that you join me on Discord at my stages event, 6 p.m. on the 15th of July. That's 6 p.m. UK time. This, all the other times. And what's really cool is we can actually have a one-to-one -one chat with a bunch of you. You can ask me questions. This can be a little bit of an ask me anything, ask me whatever you want. If you come up and you feel like it, you could throw lewd insults at me. You can ask me about my hobbies. You can ask me about my work. We're just gonna have a nice time chatting for about an hour, maybe two hours. All you gotta do to come join me is get a Discord account. It's completely free and it takes only about 15 seconds to set up. There is a link down in the description below. Thank you to Discord for sponsoring this video and this event. And on that fine note, it is probably time to head back to the grinding room. So let me show you what my setup has been here with the grinder. We've got the bench tilting stand, so we tipped our grinder sideways so we can look straight down on the wheel. But here, I only have the standard work rest that comes with the grinder when you buy it, which is usually fine. Because the platen rotates, you can generally get away with the regular work rest. Now, we have an accessory that would have allowed us to do this, which is a universal tool rest. It's got all sorts of angling capabilities. It has up and down. It's got all sorts of movement that allows you to get it exactly wherever you need. But I didn't bring one with me when I shipped over the crate of stuff from America to here. So I had to super glue on some MDF onto my original work rest. We'd brought our work table up high enough to be able to reach the grinding wheel. I'm quite happy to say it actually ended up being pretty square and it's worked a treat so far. And we're now gonna switch out this two inch contact wheel for a one inch contact wheel. Reason being, we're not quite using a small enough radius to be able to get all the way in to the guard tips. You see, we can still see the milling cuts from the bridge port. Slap that in. It's still fairly square. And we can finish off some of those fine details. So right now, having got most of the profile in this orientation roughed in, I've got to think very carefully about my order of operations. Because we want to make something that is square. It can't be sitting skew whiff off the side of the blade. I don't want these lobes to either be happy or frowning. And for us to not have any of these issues, we need to be able to have reference points to work from that allow us to build something that's square, straight, not happy or sad. So on this one side, I lined up a printed paper template onto a centered scribe line, and that's all well and good. That doesn't get us perfection in accuracy, but it gets us fairly close. It probably gets us to half a millimeter. The trouble is, what we now need to do is we now need to cut into it in this orientation right here. We need to thin it down. And as soon as we start cutting in in this orientation, we lose the ability to have these scribe lines. So before I do anything that loses these reference points, I need to use them to make more reference points that allow me to destroy these, having hopefully not cut off my own tail in the process. So now we're gonna cut off all of this material with the grinder, get rid of all of that. That'll leave us a 10 millimeter square on the end to form the ball out of, and it'll get us these nice tapering quillens on both sides. So now we're about to go into the grinding room. But Jamie, something has just occurred to me. You know, we, as part of running this YouTube channel, we also have a part of the business that sells blacksmithing and blacksmithing equipment. Specifically, one of the key things we sell is grinders. Here's the thing, Jamie. I've spent a long time talking about how miserable the grinding room is, therefore talking about how miserable grinding is, and we have a drop of grinders that we're about to sell, and I've been for the last many, many years telling people that grinding is miserable. How can we expect people to ever want to buy a belt grinder and want to do any of this stuff if we're constantly bad-mouthing grinding and the grinding room? I'm thinking we rebrand the whole concept of grinding. We make grinding not a miserable, dirty, dangerous thing that you've got to protect your lungs from. But we, in fact, make it the hippest, most modern, retro, enjoyable, old school, and hip hop thing 
Make ever. it like exciting to go the run around. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I think it needs a disco. <laughs> Right, back to work. So I'm currently working away on an A45 Trizact belt to clean up these sides here. We used a Bill Benke file guide to clean up a little bit of the transition into the ball there. But I've let myself slip into the easiest trap to fall into when you're making something. You get ever so close to the end of a given step, you get a little bit cocky. You think you're just a little bit too much of a hot shot. You think, you know what? I've got this. And then, you rush, and then you don't got it. These two sides are fairly good. That side is acceptable. And then here, you might as well say we're filming in Facetville because we got a whole lot of planes here. Now, if you've ever tried to make a knife or grind anything flat on a belt grinder, you've experienced this. You're trying to make your nice flat bevel, and instead of a nice flat bevel, you end up with all sorts of different facets that are visible because of the different ways they're gonna reflect the light, even though they're minor. And what you might note also is that as you get into higher and higher grits, it's easier and easier to make these rough looking facets. And I think I know why. If we're trying to get to that blue bevel there, and we take a 36 grit belt and take a really heavy pass, even if we don't match the angle of the bevel perfectly, we're still gonna have a flat plane created because we removed a lot of material and we just went across. But the closer we get to the final bevel, we're gonna start going up to higher grits. A higher grit is going to remove less material per pass, which means if your two passes have irregular angles, instead of cutting the whole way through the entire face on the subsequent pass, because you've got a lower grit belt, you might well, with your irregular angle, only remove that much material and end up only removing this right here, leaving a facet right there. Then progressively, you keep grinding. You take another pass, and the angle is slightly wrong. Okay, great, you removed all of this stuff there. But you left a little facet here. So the higher and higher up in grit you go, the less material you remove each pass, and therefore, the easier it is to have all sorts of facets appear. And so even though you think you're finishing to work and you're getting it clean and pristine, it's almost the easiest time to mess it up. So the way I'm gonna fix this is leave the gloves out here so I've got a little more dexterity. So what I'm making, hopefully, is gonna work out and actually be useful. I'm essentially making a way of turning a part when it can't fit into a jaw. So we have a center, and then we have, I think they call it a dog. Is it like a chuck dog or something like that? Man, I should really know. But we have a bar of steel that is going to transmit the rotational force from this, held in the chuck, into our guard so that I can hopefully, in the lathe, use a grinder to cut in those nice little fullers so that they stay central and neat. Okay, so you can see, despite the fact that it's only held with a point here, it's now spinning. The idea I have is this. Goes on here, somehow, somewhere, in such a way that we grind it into a ball, or at least a circle. Obviously, I can't put the lathe cutter on it because it's not well supported enough. God, I'd love to be smart. Oh. There we go, look at that. Interesting. This is gonna send sparks in my face. I'd probably be done by now with perfectly acceptable accuracy if I just did it on the grinder. It feels entirely safe. It's the most dangerous two pieces of equipment in the entire workshop. So the idea is it'll work like this. The trigger's zip-tied shut. Battery turns it on. Bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a high-tech lathe grinder. I still need to work out if this is actually sensible or if this is just a really good way to uh, end up dead by angle grinder and lathe. So catch me on the next episode. Catch me at 6 p.m. on July 15th at my stages event. Thank you to Discord for sponsoring this video. And also be sure to catch yourself a steel grinder on the 14th of July at Alex Steel Co. Thanks so much for watching, bye-bye.